Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Joe Mo Show on 88.3 FM, WXOU, Auburn Hills, Michigan, Oakland University, and all your wonderful station identification features. This is the Joe Mo Show, and I am your host, Giovanni Mosheri, your sports media director here at WXOU. And the Joe Mo Show is your home for all Oakland University sports and beyond on 88.3 FM. Don't forget to follow WXLU on our MAB award-winning social media platforms, including Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And while you're on those apps, make sure to give me a follow as well, as I do not have the MAB award-winning credibility, although I do like to believe I have a similar level of quality. So be sure to give me a follow, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you've missed the show, then don't worry. we got the Joe Mo Show for you on YouTube and Spotify after the live show here. And as we're struggling with technology, as usual here, we're up live on YouTube. YouTube, or at least going to be eventually. I'll, I'll introduce the stream once it turns on. But for now, we're going to keep going on 88.3 FM, baby, where we are home. So for today's show, as usual, you guys got kind of get the rhythm of the show here of Oakland sports and whatever professional sports I happen to be fixated on at the time. And that professional sports is going to be the US PBL. But you guys might be a little bit confused. Giovanni, there's no more there's no more new Oakland sports here. All the sports are done. Baseball wrapped up a couple of weeks ago or wrapped up last week or a couple of weeks ago. What are you going to be talking about here? What are you going to go over, you know, past seasons of the 2022-2023 school year for different sports and athletics throughout the summer? Yes. Good guess. That was very accurate. That's what I'm going to be doing this summer because like I was saying baseball's all done with. I'm going to go through More or less chronological order of last year. Uh, This week we're going to go through the season of volleyball in 2022. And yes, they did play a spring season uh, recently. However, the information on it is not quite ready enough for the Joe Mo Show with all due respect. So we're going to be covering the Horizon League uh, winter, or I should say the fall season for the Golden Grizzlies. As well as we're going to go over the past week of US PBL baseball as I love me some Jimmy John's field. And... We got a very special guest coming on to the show here from the past, as it is a pre-recorded interview to fit both of our schedules. But we got Patty Cicerini going to be coming on to the show at about 6.30, the second half of the show. I got a great interview with her. She is one of the most marvelous characters in you know on Oakland's campus, I would say, or at least in the sports media world, because not only does she play volleyball for Oakland and is a first-team All-Horizon League outside hitter in the Horizon League, you know, like she's top dog. Uh, when it when it comes to Horizon League volleyball, but she also has a very you know a a growing career in sports broadcasting that I had the I've had the luxury of being um, present for at least for the beginning parts of it, working with her uh, on the sideline of basketball games and you know a little bit here and there and other and other media productions. It's been a lot of fun working with Patty, and I, and it's about time I get her on the show. So I'm very excited to have her on and play that interview for you guys later at 6:30. And it seems like the YouTube stream is going to be difficult with me, as you know, as it usually is for the first time using a new piece of technology here. But that's how it goes. We keep fighting. We keep uh, striving for greatness here on the Jomo Show as usual. But while that's getting going, let me tell you about Bart's Pizza. Bart Basilico reinvented his father's pizzeria business by putting it on wheels. And I'm talking a pizza food truck, baby. Bart and his wife Lauren travel all around Metro Detroit, cooking up homemade pies made fresh to order in their four-layer pizza oven on wheels. You can find them on their website at eatbartspizza.com and on Instagram and Facebook at Bart's Pizza. His last name is literally Basil. And if I got to spell it out for you, you got Basilico and you got Basil. It's the same thing. So his last name is literally Basil, so you know he knows what he's doing. And make sure to grab a cannoli while you're at it, as those things are fantastic. It's Bart's Pizza. It's too good. And I think I'm going to be fighting with his YouTube stream for uh, all show here, but I'm going to try and split my attention as best I can uh, for the Joe Mo Show's first YouTube live stream. And it worked well at the beginning, but uh, the webcam is giving me difficulties. But that's okay. We're going to keep going with the Oakland volleyball that I promised you about 90 seconds ago. So to go over last year's season, I want to give you a little bit of context as to the season prior, the 2021 season. Oakland finished 9-9 and in the Horizon League and 15-14 and overall in 2021. And then coming into this season, Horizon League and the voters of whoever, uh, whoever has such credibilities, uh, the preseason polls voted Oakland the sixth team in the Horizon League going into this season. 
And to wrap and, and to give you a preview of the final score and all that stuff, Oakland finished this 2022 season 7 and 11 in, Hor- in the Horizon League and 11 and 19 overall, good for seventh in the Horizon League in 2022. So it looks like the preseason polls were not far off. But if you to, if you stay tuned in at 6.30 for the Patty Cesarini interview, then you'll know that they're not quite satisfied with that record and placement, and they're going to be striving for greatness next year, You know, just like we do here at WXOU, always striving for greatness. So to start off the season, they had a 12, game, uh, 12 games out of conference, playing in four weekend events, and through all that, they went four and eight. And I'll take you through the different events. So they started off the season at the Top Dog Challenge, hosted by Butler University, who are the Bulldogs, thus the Top Dog. The season started August 26th, where in those three games, Oakland went 1-2 and and beating Akron for their first win of the year during that weekend. They followed that up with another road trip on September 2nd to Kent State for the Kent State International or Invitational rather, for another three games. The first two games, they started off hot, first two games were a 3-0 sweep against Southern Indiana or, or yeah, Southern Indiana and Cornell, but Kent State the hosting team was able to get the best of them in that last match, giving them a 2 and 1 record on the weekend and a total record of 3 and 3 through 2 weeks. I am embarrassed about this YouTube stream. I made a big stink of it. I figured out how to <laughs> I figured out how to link a um a YouTube video or to put a web link on an Instagram story. So I thought I was a genius and it turns out it was all for naught. but thank you for all who are tuning into the FM to the 88.3 FM signal or to those later on YouTube and Spotify. I really appreciate it. And we'll try to get it figured out for next week. But moving on to the third week of the season, the Golden Grizzlies traveled to Memphis for the Beale Street Challenge. Oakland unfortunately lost all three games in that weekend against Illinois State hosting Memphis and Queens University, Queens University uh, from New York, bumping them down to a current season record of three and six. And for their final non-conference event, they, ch- they traveled to East Lansing for the Green and White Invitational. Oakland went one and two in these games, losing to the hosting Spartans, beating e- uh, Ian'sville, but also losing to Chicago State. So they start into, so they step into the Horizon League uh, uh, season, I guess you could say, the Horizon League play four and eight as of September twentieth of two thousand twenty-two. So for the first game of Horizon League play, it was on the road against Robert Morris, who finished last in the Horizon League last year. And OU got it done in four sets, giving them a now five and eight record overall. And I'm not I'm not gonna be giving the record every single game, but I will periodically. So their next so their next Horizon League game was a uh, the first home game. It was the home opener of the season. I remember uh, when I was very you know, very early doing this stuff. I was in my dorm room and I felt I uh, did a little promo video, you know, before I was good at it, and promoting people to go to the arena for this home opener against Northern Kentucky. And they played Wright State the next day. And I remember that one not going so well. I was kind of quiet. I was in my dorm room. The mic wasn't good, and you know I haven't come out of my shell yet as I have now. But I, rem- I remember that um, you know if you if you scroll way down. On, uh, my in- on my Instagram, you might find it, or you can find it uh, on the Jomo Show uh, Instagram page. I can't remember which one I posted it to. But in those two opening home games against Northern Kentucky and Wright State, who, by the way, were second and third in the Horizon League last year, respectively, um, they played them and unfortunately lost both games in the opening weekend at, on September 23rd and 24th. They then are on the road again for a, for a four-game road stand. Would it be called a road stand? It'll call it a road trip. A four-game road trip. Oakland split all four of those games. They beat Youngstown State and Green Bay, but unfortunately lost to uh, Cleveland State and Milwaukee during their trip. So they return home with a 3-4 and four Horizon League record, 7-12 and 12 overall, and are now home for a three-game home stand. In those three games, Oakland went 2-1 and one during that stretch against IUPUI, Purdue Fort Wayne, and Youngstown State. They lost to Youngstown State, but it went all the way to five sets, so it was so close to getting a home Horizon League sweep in that week of the season, but it was not to be, as Oakland uh, went just two for one in those three home games. So that sends them back to the road for the weekend to face Wright State University and Northern Kentucky once again, and losing both those games before returning home for another four home games. Sadly, in those four home games, Oakland lost all but one against 
uh, Cleveland State, uh, Robert Morris, Milwaukee, and Green Bay. Oakland was able to beat Robert Morris and get the sweep on the get the sweep on the Colonials for that season. But Cleveland State, Milwaukee, and Green Bay got the best of them. And remember, one of the early broadcasts on WXOU was the game versus Green Bay that was on senior night. This is when WXOU was starting to um, get started. You know, we did a few warm-up games. We did a men's soccer game. That was also senior night. Um, but that, that, was a bit, that was a mock broadcast. Uh, didn't go on air. But we started doing a couple of volleyball games to kind of get to know the equipment, get to know the staff in the old arena. And I, I, rem- I remember watching it, calling it. it. It was a fantastic game. Unfortunately, it ended in a loss. But... What I've noticed about Oakland Athletics is I do a great job on senior night. I've been to, or I've watched, I guess, four senior nights so far in this school year with um, men's soccer being one of them, volleyball, and then men's and women's basketball. I was there for senior night in one way or another. And Oakland just does a fantastic job, you know, putting on a show. You know, they they got the framed jerseys, they got the balloons, the flowers, and just the works. And it's it's always a lot better when you got Kevin Beers narrating the entire event. For a senior day, I mean, unfortunately, it ended in a loss. But you see the vit, you, you see like the videos of their teammates wishing the seniors goodbye and good luck, and we'll miss you. And the parents are there. It, it's, it's just such an awesome event. And if I were an athlete, I'd be very excited, um, very excited to be honored in that kind of way. They they do they do a great job. But the Grizzlies then move on to their two last home to their two last games of the season on the road against Purdue Fort Wayne and IUPUI where they split those games. So all of that adds up to a final record of 7 and 11 in the Horizon League and 11 and 19 overall. Good for 7th place in the Horizon League, but unfortunately not good enough to get into the Horizon League tournament, which is where Oakland wants to be. You'll hear Patty at 6:30 talk about how they want to be there and how they're striving for greatness like I keep saying. Yo, 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 I'm Jake Masucci from Jake's Takes. I wanted to talk a little bit about my show on my guy Giovanni's, Giovanni's own show. And I wanted to talk about a little bit about Jake's Takes. I'm a student manager at Oakland University, and I kind of just talk all things sports. I talk a lot about the NBA, talk a little college basketball. We did a lot of March Madness stuff recently. We talked about NBA playoffs, NFL playoffs, talked a lot about the NFL draft. It's basically just an all things sports show. I really think you guys would enjoy it. And shout out to my guy, Giovanni. Love him. But please check out Jake's Takes. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and then it's also available on its own YouTube channel. So please check out Jake's Takes, but please continue enjoying Giovanni's show. So, because we're running a little bit short on time here on the Joe Mo Show, we got a few minutes here to cover USPBL baseball at Jimmy John's Field. So, we have week three that wrapped up, and we have a little bit of week four happening uh, that happened in the middle of the week, and we got another game uh, that's going to be played later today at 7. But I'll give you the rundown of the past week of Jimmy John's Field Baseball. And this time I actually went to the games. As uh, cur- uh, Previously, I've just been talking about it and haven't been there. And, you know, I'm full of hot air. But this time I went I went to two games that, uh, uh, this past weekend. And I loved every second of it. I enjoyed the games in different ways uh, for, uh, for, both, those ga- for uh, both the nights. But I had a great time uh, at Jimmy John's Field. And I'll tell you about the games that were played. So to start off the weekend, Hoppers played the Mammoths on Friday in a very defensive game that ended in a tough loss for my Hoppers. Mammoths win it 2-0. to zero. So the Hoppers lose their, th- at, at the time at least, Hoppers lose their third game in a row and fall to 3-3 three and three after starting undefeated 3-0. and oh. The Mammoths won, win their past three games to improve to 3-4. and four. And this game was just ugly. This was not one of the ones that I was there to watch. But, you know, you look at some of the stats... You know, the Hoppers, they pitched well. I mean, the score was only 2-0, to zero, so the pitching was very well. It was done very well. Luke Drummond pitched for 4.2 innings, had only four hits and two runs and four strikeouts, uh, facing uh, 22 batters. But the Mammoths just had even more incredible pitching. For a shutout, you would, you would you know, kind of come to understand that. But the, the Hoppers got a single hit all game long. It happened in the third inning for Alex Pup, but that was literally the only hit of that game. 
And the player, and, and thus the player of the game was Garrett Martin, pitcher for the Mammoths, who pitched for six innings and allowed just that single hit, along with seven strikeouts. Like I was obviously upset that my Hoppers lost, but like my my goodness, that's such a fantastic pitching job. And the Mammoths they got through two runs off of an RBI in the first inning and a walk to a walk for a score in the fourth inning to give that final score of two to zero. So moving on to Saturday's doubleheader, it was the Unicorns and Beavers. I went to game two of this doubleheader with my friends and enjoyed enjoyed the game from afar. You know, enjoyed the company of my of my lovely friends there. Enjoyed the company of a of some beverages in the shape of a baseball bat and um, other such activities. But you know, for me in this, you know, me covering the USBBL, I guess I should kind of go back, uh, kind of explain why I'm covering them so much and so dil- and so you know. Um, diligently is because not because they're like sponsoring me or they're paying me or, you know, I've been assigned to cover them. I just like what they do. I love the product that they put out. I love the family friendly environment that they got. It's a cheap game. You know, the, the, a lot of the rules and, you know, just the way they do business is really geared towards the audience and like a family audience. And I just love what they do. I love that it's local. I love that. I love driving by it like twice a day, like almost every day, you know, going my way on M59 um, to and from Oakland, you know, so I just like what they do. And I like going to the games. I like keeping track. The the Hoppers thing came from, uh, I think I was in one of the early seasons of the USPBL. Uh, 2016 or 2017, my my parents took us to a game. It was Beavers and Hoppers. We didn't know. And, and by at that time, it was just it was just Beavers, Hoppers, and Unicorns. The Mammoths uh, haven't come in yet, but you know my you know my dad offered like, hey, let, let, you know, you guys want some shirts? And I was like, yeah. And we kind of arbitrarily just chose our teams. You know, I I, bought, I got the Hopper shirt. My brother got the Beavers shirt. But you know me, I guess you guys could tell this from me either by the show or from. Uh, Instagram, I just get hype for small things. Oakland sports, I understand, isn't the biggest market, but I get so hyped for it. And the Hoppers, it's small, but I get hyped for it because it, they're my teams. I love my teams. Even if you go up to the professionals as well. Like the, I, I get hype. So I just, so I like covering them, and I'm the biggest Hoppers fan in the world. There's no question. There is no denying it, and I dare you to prove it otherwise. So that that's a little bit of why I, I cover the USPBL here. And if you don't like it, sorry. Because like I was saying before, there's not other Oakland sports to cover. I got to talk about something. So USPBL has graciously accepted the role. Anyway, doubleheader, Beavers, Unicorns. Game one was all Unicorns as the final score was 8-3. to three. And this game, it, was, it started off with a big lead for the Unicorns. It went up 4-0 uh, to zero going, into the, going into the fourth inning. And just kind of kept it, just outscored them almost every inning. So they're up. So you go into the fourth inning. Unicorns are up four to zero. Beavers get one run, but then the unicorns get two. Fifth inning, beavers get one. Unicorns get another two, and the beavers are just not able to catch up in time and with enough points. So game one goes to the unicorns, and then game two was a deadlock. This is the one me and my friends went to, and what brought me to that big conversation was I want to kind of hype up, kind of promote, and get people, you know, get my friends on board with the USPBL. And, of course, it's a 0-0 game that they go see. Not that it wasn't, you know, not that there wasn't anything to take away from that game, but it's hard enough to get people hype about baseball, just the the sport itself, and you get a 0-0 game. Final score, by the way. It, it, you know, I'll t- you know, I've talked about sudden death before, but the the game ended in sudden death and for the defense. And it was in favor of the Beavers this time. The Beavers were able to split the doubleheader by winning in sudden death. And to kind of explain sudden death again here, uh, so instead of playing a full extra inning like you would in, in the majors, uh, what the USPBL does is they play a half inning. The teams will flip a coin. And choose, and that would decide who plays offense and who who, uh, who plays defense. The team that plays offense has the last runner or has the last batter that went up. They go to first base, and the run, and the batter behind them is up to bat. You get a half inning. You get three outs to score that runner or to score it all. The job of the defense is to get those three outs without score allowed. If 
You know, obviously, if the offense scores, they win the game. If the defense keeps them from scoring, they win the game and the score freezes. So if it's 0-0 and the defense wins, it stays 0-0, just, you know, Beavers win. So that's 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 what happened. Uh, player of the game for this series was Jesse, was Jesse Galindo, the pitcher for the Beavers. He pitched four innings and allowed only three hits and six strikeouts, facing 15 batters. So a great performance by the Beavers to stay alive against the Unicorns after a after a tough game won in the doubleheader. Now here's where the fireworks come in. You thought that 0-0 was boring. How about 20-2? to That was the final score of the Hoppers and the Mammoths. You saw my little gloating post on Instagram. It's, not, it's just business. Our, uh, Hoppers scoring 20 against the Mammoths um, to kind of get revenge after their, for that Friday game. And, to, and for the Hoppers to break that losing streak. So for this game, though, it wasn't as much, I'll, I'll be honest, it wasn't as much the Hoppers were just hitting everything. I would look more to the Mammoths pitching. As you get into the fourth and fifth inning, and it's just a merry-go-round. Walks after walks after walks. You get four, I mean, you have four walks in a single inning, that's going to score. And, you know, it was just a complete car- uh, carousel of batters just flooding in. In the fifth inning, you had four runs. In the sixth inning, you had seven. In the, in the sixth inning, you had seven runs. Seventh inning, you had five, and they didn't even make it all the way to nine innings because the two-and-a-half-hour mark. Another thing I like about the USPBL, they just cut it off at two-and-a-half hours. And it, it was just hard to watch. Not hard to watch for me, but you know, you're watching, and like some of the pitches are not even close to the strike zone, and... I'm not sure of the rules for uh, switching pitchers, but it, they seem to be out there for a very, very long time. But, you know, let's look at the positives here. My Hoppers, let, 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 let's go through some of the stats. The Hoppers hitting stats. So Alex Pup, he went two for four with two runs and two RBIs. Anthony Flores, he went one for five with four RBIs and two runs. Noah McCrow had he was three for five, three RBIs, two runs. Chris O'Neill, two for four, two runs, two RBIs. Whit Hughes, two for four, three runs. And the player of the game, Chandler Dunn, went three for went one for three with three runs and two RBIs. He got a home run. Um, he got a two run home run in this game. And if you look at uh, USPBL's Twitter uh, after announcing Chandler Dunn was the player of the game they just say maybe we should just say the whole team gets player of the game for the hoppers as that those 20 runs they set a team record for most runs in a game and they tied the league record for runs in a game so a 20 point game has happened before and as well every single hopper scored i love it i'm a big fan of it so the hoppers improve four to three and the mammoths fall to three and four in the league and to and to back up to beavers and unicorns uh, Beavers and Unicorns, um, at the time, what would it be? Unicorns 4-2 to two and Beavers 2-4. and four. So it, so after the weekend, Utica's on top. Then it goes Beavers, Mammoths, or Beavers and Mammoths. I said it right. Go look it up online, USPBL.com. Go look it up for yourself if I'm not saying it right. Anyway, moving on to some of the week, some of the weekday games here. As we're really, we're really pushing it here on the Joe Mo Show. Looks like you're just gonna have to go and watch the Patty Cesarini interview. You know, watch the last few minutes of it on YouTube. It just, uh, should be uploaded by now, so you can go watch it for yourself after the show. But anyway, we got a couple games left to cover here. Beavers play the Mammoths on Tuesday, where the Beavers were able to squeak out a win against the Mammoths, seven to six. This one, it was a big Beavers lead in the beginning. Beavers were up 6-1 to one after three innings, including a three-run home run. Then the scoring fizzled out a little bit. Each team collected a run going into the seventh inning. But then the Mammoths, they made a very big four-point push in, in the seventh and eighth inning to make the game real close, to make it 7-6. to six. And they had one more chance at it in the ninth inning, but the Beavers were able to put a lid on it, keep the score where it was, and have their win by one run, 7-6. to six. A player without a first name, Malek, listed for the Beavers, hit hit a home run in the 
uh, what's that? Hit the uh, three run home run in the first inning, as I mentioned. But then you also have Reese Trahe. He went one for four for the Mammoths with two runs and an RBI. And then you got Zach Beadle, who went two for four, one run and two RBIs in that game. But the Beavers collect a win, seven to six. And then we got um, Unicorns and Hoppers. This one, I believe, was played on Wednesday. On, uh, in other words, yesterday. That's right, June 7th was the game between the Unicorns and Hoppers. Another tight one, another tight defensive one. Utica wins 3-2 to two against my Hoppers because, of course, they did. So it's kind of a similar story to the game prior. You got teams kind of – or you got Utica with a 3-1 lead after the third inning, so Utica's kind of up early. Then the scoring stopped at, up until all the way to the eighth inning. With the Hoppers, they just got one run to cut it now to 3-2 to two, and were unable to cap it off in the ninth inning, freezing the score 3-2. to two. Unicorns win. So for my hoppers, Chandler Dunn followed up his great performance against the Mammoths with a two for four and a run for this game. And then Taj Porter went two for four with a run and an RBI. But unfortunately, it was not enough. Nick Pastor for the Unicorns went two for three with a run. But I'll tell you something, in a game like this, the hoppers, they, you know, they held the Unicorns to three. And they, the Unicorns left 11 runners on base. Hoppers left five runners on base. Still unable to make it happen against the Unicorns. So, where does that leave the league as of today? That leaves the league. Uh, one second, let me find the... Let me find the uh, standings. Come on, show me the standings, please. So currently the standings are Utica's on top five and two. East side is in second at four and four. Birmingham Bloomfield Beavers three and four, and West Side Woolly Mammoths three and five. Those are the current standings of the USPBL. A game being played today against it's the Beavers and Mammoths today at seven o'clock at Jimmy John's Field. So that's going to be your little update on the USPBL. Some exciting games happening. Hoppers break a record. But unfortunately, Hoppers lose two in very tight defensive games. And there's other teams too, but you know my fandom to the Hoppers. So very exciting weekend. And that's going to bring us to our 6.30 break. Coming up after this is that interview with Patty Cesarini that I've been teasing throughout the entire show like a good radio host does. So coming up after these messages from WXOU, we will hear from Patty Cesarini. We'll be right back on the Jomo Show.